So unlike other UI frameworks, like maybe React for web development, creating custom components in a framework like .NET MAUI isn't necessarily simple and it's kind of intimidating. But I hope that doesn't sway you away from creating custom components because, of course, it's important and you don't want to be duplicating UI code everywhere. So in this demo MAUI application, we have three cards over here for three different sushi rolls. Very exciting. And as we can see over here in the code, we're just duplicating the vertical stack layout for each of our sushi cards. And the structure and components are all the same. The only real differences are the contents within each card. And of course, the main issue here is duplication. So since we're duplicating this UI code throughout this page, it makes it more difficult to maintain and more difficult to provide a consistent UI across our application. And of course, if these cards were spread out more throughout our application and not just in the same page, it would make it even more difficult to provide consistency and maintain. So the solution here, pretty obvious, we wanna create a custom MAUI component. Now that can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. We're not building some sort of wild custom component that's gonna to have to be highly configurable and can be reused in tons of applications. We're building more of an application specific custom component that's gonna be specific to our application and doesn't need to be highly configurable. And by that, it's gonna bring down the complexity of a custom component significantly. And because of that, because this doesn't have to be highly configurable, the best choice for our custom component is going to be creating a .NET MAUI content view. So we'll call our custom component the sushi card. And let's just copy over one of our cards. So really the border is the card content, not the vertical stack layout. So let's copy that over. Actually, let's go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, we'll copy it, not cut it. And let's paste that in this content view. So now we pretty much have the UI, but of course with a custom component that we want to reuse, we're going to want to pass in different content when we use the sushi card. And that's going to be configured in code behind using bindable properties. So bindable properties basically let us define custom XAML attributes. So in this case, we want to have a custom attribute for this title, the description, and maybe the command that we want to bind to. So again, in the code behind, referencing this bindable property documentation, which I'll link in the description, let's just copy this and define our bindable property. This one's going to be called the title property. So it's going to be the title of our card. It's going to be for our sushi card. The default will be just an empty string. And then we also need to define an accessor so that our sushi card instance can get the value of the bindable property. So let's copy that over too. Just add that down here. So this will be called the title, referencing our title bindable property. And then we also want our bindable property to reference this property on our sushi card instance. And I also realized this needs to be a string and not a Boolean. So let's fix that everywhere. And boom, we should be good. So while we're here, let's add other bindable properties. So one for the description. So we'll have a description property, which is also gonna be a string. And then one more bindable property to pass in the add to cart command. So let's add that. And the type here is actually gonna be not a string of course, but an MVVM I command. And the default value should probably be null, I would assume. So now that we have our bindable properties, we can get an idea of how we're gonna use our sushi card from our page. So first we're going to have to import our sushi card. So let's import that from our namespace. We'll call this local. And I believe the namespace is just content view components. So we should be able to just start typing that. And there we go. We import from that namespace. And now if we dig into that namespace, we should see our sushi card pop up in IntelliSense. Very nice. And we should be able to set the bindable properties that we defined. So as we can see, we got the title we can set that the description boom there we go and finally the command so the add to cart command will be a binding to our view model add to cart command and now we can remove our duplicated component and use the sushi card for all of our other components so no more duplication we're enforcing our ui to be consistent and another benefit, our UI is more readable. But now, even though we understand how we're gonna use our sushi card, our sushi card still doesn't work because we're not referencing these bindable properties on our code behind. We're still hard coding this content. So instead of hard coding, we need to add a binding 
to the title property on our code behind. But this actually isn't going to work because we're binding to whatever the binding context is of our sushi card. And we're not setting a binding context within our custom component, which I typically don't like to do. And instead, we're just inheriting the binding context of our main page where we're using this component, which is just going to be our main page view model, which of course doesn't have the title property that we're looking for. So we need to explicitly state that we want to bind to the title property on our custom component. And the way I like to do that is to give our content view a name. So I'll just call this component. And then on our binding, we can define a source and reference our component. So this is referencing our content view, which we've named component. And that has our title property because we have it in our code behind. And we even get IntelliSense here, I think. So we should get yeah description, title. There we go, nice. So we can do the same thing for our other bindings. So bind to the description and then bind to the add to cart command. And I just realized I spelled this add to card command. This should be add to cart command. So let me fix that real quick. There we go, much better. And fix that up here as well. Silly mistake. Our custom components are working. No more duplication. We're enforcing consistency with a common component. We're referencing the data that we're passing in to our custom component, which is definitely good. Our command works, nice. And although bindable properties and custom components can be a bit intimidating compared to other UI frameworks, once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. So overall, hopefully you can apply this to your own .NET Mali application to create fun, reusable components, and most importantly, reduce duplication.